start off with today by referring to it and um, let you feel the direction I'd be going in the scriptures. Um, I'm thankful to have men around me that are elders in the church, and I've taught them so many years. I'm thankful to have handmaidens of the Lord that love the Lord and sisters that steadfastly hold to the gospel in the church. And I'm thankful for all of your labor and your faithfulness through many, many days. Most of you, a good part of you. And um, keeping this uh, ecclesia, the church, here on 7th Avenue, and causing us to come back time after time, time after time, day after day, week after week, year after year, to try to do service to the Lord and to try to have a garner in this city. <laughs> you see, there are people that come to a city and they're only going to be there a few days. What will the church do, that is the church, when they move on? The church is not mobile. It becomes stationary. Yes. See, the church is founded upon a rock. Oh, yes. And you don't move a building you put on a rock every 15 days. That's right. Yeah. Or every 20 days. Yeah. That is there upon the rock. Oh, yes. It's not a temporary thing. It's not a contemporary thing. Right. It's founded upon the rock. Jesus did not have in mind that his church would be moved. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. He knew the Pharisees would not even be in existence now. He knew the Sadducees would not be in existence. But he said, my church will. He said, I will build my church upon the rock. And the gates of hell it will not prevail against that church. Right. So when there's a contemporary or a temporary thing that comes to a city, that's good. Give honor unto God. Any honor that can be given to him, any uh, honor given to a vessel of God. But remember, that's not the church. Right. Because if it were the church, it would become stationary because God called that to that city. God called Brother Roberts of Bridge Builder to this city yes, sir. 70 years ago. I came in under his ministry and God used me these 52 years to keep the church. Because God did not establish this church, Gospel Tabernacle as it's called, it used to be called Gospel of Peace Mission, uh, upon a contemporary basis. He established it so that generations would come and get the vision. Generations would understand the gospel. Generations would see the vision of the church upon the rock. Upon this rock, you don't move that which is founded on a rock. It's not temporary. It's not there a few days. No, sir. Not just there to give out some plaudits, no, and some praise, use some gimmicks and gadgets, use some uh, spiritual sorcery. Uh, it's not there for that purpose. It's there to weather the storm. Yes, sir. It's there to keep continuity yes, with God. It's there to be there when it isn't really fair weather, the church will be there. It's to be there when it's stormy. It's to be there when there's trouble. And the church is there to stand with you and by you, not against you. And that's one of the, that's one of the marks of the church. It never opposes its own. Uh, if there's a brother that's going through a hard place, and I'll be one of those brethren because I've been through hard places, 
and you will too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going through a place where I'm being tested and tried, the church is there to help me, yes. to heal me, yes, to not curse me, <clears throat> to not hurt me, to not bruise me, but to be more tender and loving and kind than you've ever been. Yes. When you yes. see a brother yes. or a sister going through a hard place, Amen. it's time to just show them more love than you ever had. Yeah. Uh, it's time to just let them know that you really love them. That you really care. It's not a put on. It's not a pretense. It's not a put up. You really love them. You really love them. You die for them. So that's the church. The church is there for compassion. The church is there to lift up. Yes, really. church is there to heal because it's the church yes it's founded upon a rock the church. Uh -huh. and the gates of hell can't prevail against that oh, no. Amen. Amen. The gates of hell won't prevail against that because oh, no. right? oh, no. that church will not hate its own flesh right. and paul said that didn't he yes yes visions of him chapter yes. he said but no man yet but no man yet had ever hated his own flesh, yes. but nourished it and cherished it. That's, 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 that's the hallmark of a family. When a family is going through loss and pain and suffering, that family really should show more love than they ever had. Amen. More yes. compassion. Yes. When I broke my leg here uh, a few years ago, my wife, didn't desert me. She didn't. Uh, she didn't leave me. I was a load to carry, having to couldn't get out of the chair, couldn't walk. I couldn't uh, care for myself. I couldn't even go get a glass of water. But my wife was there every day, every night. Amen. There in the morning. There in the evening. See, that's care. So you don't hate your own flesh. You don't hate that which is bonded right. to you. Amen. Amen. You don't hate that which you care for. See, no man ever did, did that, Paul said. Had his own flesh. And we are flesh of flesh. Oh, yes. We are bone of bone. All right. Amen. In the body of Christ. Yes. In the church of the living God. Yes. We are to be bone of bone. Yes. <clears throat> And flesh of flesh. I want to say this, and you may not understand it, but I hope you will. I have a natural family. They're gone now. Some of them are. I have two brothers yet living, two sisters. But I am closer to you brothers in this church than I've ever been to my own natural brother. Brother Marlow, that shouldn't be. I can't help if it shouldn't be. God made it that way. Right. Uh -huh. I didn't arrange it. Through the years, I right. marched with you. I didn't with them. I didn't go their direction. I didn't go the direction of my natural person. Uh -huh. How could I be close to them? All right. How could I be close to them? Uh -huh. I couldn't be. They didn't want it. I couldn't be. I'm closer to you because you're my flesh. You're my spiritual right. bondsman, uh -huh. and um, I'm bonded to you. Yes. And in the church, that's the way it. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. Yep. You don't create that. You don't make that decision. God makes that decision. Yes, Amen. God chooses you before you knew He was going to choose you. Yes. God called you before you ever knew He was going to call you. Right. Amen. God separated you. I didn't make the decision one day to pack my clothes, leave the little barn I was sleeping in out here at uh, Mendoza Road, and my uncle and my dad say, come on, son, you're going with us. I didn't make that decision. See, there's a higher power than you are. Oh, yes. And if you're in the body of Christ, you'd better let the Lord lead and guide right. you. Yes. Because there's someone and he will lead and guide you above the will of flesh. All right. I said above the will of yes. flesh. Uh -huh. 
Because flesh does want to guide you. And flesh does want to lead you. But you better let the Lord take over and control. I didn't drive up here on 7th Avenue, say, son, get out of the car. Here's your home. You're never going to live there again. You're never going to be with your sisters and brothers again. You're never going to be with your family. Here's a man and woman. They're your pastor and wife, but they're going to be your father and mother. Right. Amen. Amen. And I became part of them. Oh, yes. Another household. Oh, yes. Another family just like that. <clears throat> Adoption papers. Come on. See, when God gets ready to move you, Amen. he goes past all the bureaucracy there. Right. Amen. 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 No adoption papers. My name wasn't changed. God said, that's not necessary. To do what I want to do with him, I just need to move him. I just need to get him in another habitat. You know, really, all the Lord's wanting to do with you is move him around. Oh, yes. And if, you, if you'll let him move you around, he'll put you in a place where you will do his will. Oh, yes. In spite of yourself. In spite of others. In spite of your will, you'll do what he wants you to do. That was the end of it. I never was again in the home of the Marlins. <coughs> never. From that day to this. Because God changed and rearranged. But I found flesh of flesh in the church. I found bone of bone. And now I would die for the church. I would die. You say, Brother Marlin, you don't know that you would do that. I do know I would do that. Yeah. You don't always have to be wish-washy. Right. There's a time when you can make up your mind yes, and you know that God gave you that mind yes, sir. and you will live by it and you yes, will die by it. Yes. That's right. It's called faith. Yes, sir. I know it. In the end, I'll ask you to forgive me if I hurt you. I'll go past my pride. I'll go past my feelings. Well, I'm a man. I don't have to do that. I'm a woman. You don't have to do that. Yes, I love God's people. You love God's people. You have become bonded to another family. The Lord has called you, and man had nothing to do with it because he changed your life and is changing your life. And it's the will of God for it to be so. Now, I, I want to submit to the will of God. And I can see the Lord getting this church set up, taking us through some last day tribulation. We're going through tribulation. And it's necessary that we do, because tribulation comes before the joy of the Holy Ghost. Uh, Romans 5 said uh, that being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And not only so, we have access by this spirit into the grace wherein we stand. Not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Knowing, having knowledge, that tribulation does something. It worked with patience. The power to endure. The power to endure under a strain without cracking up under that strain. Knowing that tribulation work of patience in your patience possess you your soul. Acts 14 and 23 said, but with much tribulation we enter the kingdom of God. Tribulation. Tribulation is trials. Tribulation is tests. Tribulation is adversity. Knowing that tribulation work with patience. And patience, experience. And experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto you. We're going through tribulation right now as an assembly. We're going through tribulation as we uh, plant works in God as we teach, pray, mingle, mix, keep the church, come together, fellowship, uh, love one another. As we uh, expand our vision, we're going through tribulation.
Tribulation does one of two things to you. It breaks you or it makes you. Amen. Tribulation will break you or it will make you. Amen. But if you go through tribulation and let tribulation have its perfect work, its perfect work, then it brings forth hope finally. And hope makes not a shame. And God is getting this assembly ready to be put in divine order because the signs of the time is everywhere. And the foolishness of religion is going to come to an end. Men playing church and making mockery of God is coming to an end. The playhouses of men is coming to an end. You hear what I'm saying? I, I don't, 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 don't get caught up with the glitter and glamour of what's called modern day religion. Don't get caught up with it. Don't get under the sorcery spell of what we call modern day religion. Don't get caught up with it. It's a Broadway production. It's a Broadway production. Hammerstein and Rogers couldn't have done better than some religious efforts right now. Some mega churches, some mega churches, uh, they put Rogers and Hammerstein the playwrights from South Pacific and others, uh, they put them to shame. They've got it so orchestrated. They've got it so uh, preachers leaping through smoke, being shot with a spring back of them, poof, out through smoke and uh, uh, imitation fire. And the people love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that scripture, I want that scripture. In Jeremiah 6 and 30, where it said, There's a great evil in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. And the priests bear rule by their own means. And my people love to have it so. They love to have it so. <coughs> See, we always did like to be entertained. That's in you as a child. That's your first nature. Mom and daddy hands you a rattler. Let me know. Entertain you. You keep the child quiet. Get the child's mind. The prophets prophesy falsely. And the priests bear rule by their own means. And my people love to have it so. But what will you do in the end there? So the Lord is getting ready to tear that down, to tear it up. Because there's restoring of Israel that's coming up. There's the making up of the last members of the bride of Christ. Revelation 14 and 1 must be fulfilled. And I stood and saw a lamb standing on the Mount Zion, having 144,000 standing with him, having the Father's name written in their forehead. The lamb stood there had the Father's name. Next verse down on that, please. Revelation 14 and 2. And I heard the voice from heaven as the voice of many waters. Did you know that God's voice is never hard to figure out? His voice sounds like many waters. When it comes in a church and people are praising God and they're glorifying God, it sounds like the ocean roaring. I stood in Africa and heard 5,000 people. Oh, it heard like water flowing over yeah. Niagara Falls. Thunder. God's voice sounding like the voice of great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers. Who were those harpers? The bride of Christ. Oh, yeah. I've got my harp in me right now. I'm harping a little bit. Hallelujah. There goes Brother Marlow just harping again. Yes, I am. I'm playing on my heart right now. And it's not on a willow tree, I'll have you know. I don't have my harp on a willow tree. I'm not by the rivers of Babylon. I'm not in captivity. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm not down by the rivers of Babylon. No, I haven't hung my harp on a willow tree. Because when we have our heart, 
and it's tuned, <clears throat> and it's ready to play a melody. Yeah. Yours is ready. Yeah. God raise on your feet, you play it right now. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I heard those harpers. If you know you're a harper, I know C.B. Harper back there, that's his name. I'm not talking about the genealogy of the harpers All right. from Kentucky. I'm talking about the harpers that's going to reign in third heaven All right. oh, and reign on the earth for a thousand years. Oh, hallelujah. They're going to be harpers, yeah. Oh, yeah. not by genealogy of name, <laughs> but by the fact they're filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. And their heart is on the inside of them. Praise, Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And when you get an assembly full of harpers, oh, hallelujah. you're going to have a joyful sound in that yes, church. Oh, yeah. I'm praying God will send me all the harpers. Yes, oh, hallelujah. I'm not talking about genealogy. I welcome them too. Let C B and Terrence and here welcome more. I'm talking about people filled with the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen. Coming in here where they can start playing their harp. I noticed Bev, she walked through the door today. She said, hallelujah. hallelujah. She walked by me back there. I was talking to people. She walked through the door and said, praise the Lord. Praise I heard that heart. I knew we were going to get something from God. I knew the Lord was going to help us. But I could feel the heart stirred up. You go on when you get your hearts out here. You start playing on your heart. Let the Holy Ghost make a melody and a praise and a song. Unto the Lord. Oh, yeah. Send out your heart. See if it's in tune or not. Praise the name of the Lord. The voice, the voice of many waters. The voice of a great thunder. I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Next verse down. Come right on down. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the poor beast and the elders. And no man can learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. Did you know I'm trying to teach you a new song? Yes, sir. I'm up here now. I'm your music director. I'm trying to teach you to sing this song. The song of the Lamb. The New Testament. The song of Moses. The Old Testament. Before the day is over, we'll go back and forth in the melody of these two great songs. Oh, yeah. And no man can learn this song. Nobody will ever learn it out here in Play Church, in Play-Doh. Praise the name of the Lord. In the Play-Doh of children in a spiritual nursery, in gimmicks and gadgets, and put on in pretense. They'll never learn this, thank you. No, sir. And you won't learn it unless you uh, become faithful to the church. Unless you become uh, with a revelation in your spirit. Unless you get separated from the world. You'll never sing that song. Oh, I'll sing it because I've been around long enough to learn it. You don't get it like being around necessarily a long time. You get it because the Lord opens your spirit and your heart by revelation. Praise the name of the Lord. I've seen some people sit in one service and learn more about that song than sometimes people that sat there for years. And they didn't learn the song. They didn't learn it. Because <laughs> if you learn it, you'll sing it here before you get there. Before you get to the kingdom, you'll sing it in the church. In the church age, you'll start singing it. See, the difference in us and others is we're not waiting to go to heaven to all get together. When we all get to heaven. We don't sing that song that way. We sing it right here. We need to get together here. We need to love one another here. We need to practice what we preach right here. We need to be examples right here. We need to live godly right here. We need to live holy right here. We need to be faithful right here. I want to be faithful in heaven. Well, I guess you would if you got to heaven. There'll be no doors out for you to go down to another creek. Or another canyon. But what about being faithful here where all the doors are open? You can go anywhere you want to go. You can do what you want to do. You can choose your time like you want it. You can use it like you want it. You can do what you want to do. What about here? Here. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne. 
for the beast, the elders. Go back and learn that song. I'm going to be teaching some today, and I appreciate your, your willingness to hear me uh, because I see, I see I must be faithful to God. I must obey God. Children, Brother Marlow must obey God. I must obey God. I told Brother Dean Skipper yesterday at a funeral, he's my son in the gospel, and I was listening to him saying, and I thought, boy, I raised that little fella. He'd come out of this church. Now he's up in Ringgold, Georgia, and the Lord's using him up there. But I said, Dean, I spoke to him, I said, Dean, remember this. You've got your roots and your start, and you learned to begin to sing this song in Bradenton, Florida. Yes, he said, Brother Marlow, I'll never forget where I got my roots and where I started, and I got my foundation. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know the thousands of people that have gotten their roots right here and their foundation. But if there's going to be a group of people that's going to sing the song of Moses and the Lamb. Moses, and they're going to be redeemed from the earth. You get your eyes off the temporary and contemporary uh, church, that age you're living in, the contemporary world, because God is getting ready to wind it up. Amen. Armageddon, the drums are beating now. I thought the other day when the Boston Massacre happened, Boston Marathon, the panic, the hurt, the pain, the sorrow that was in Boston and across the nation, because I went with Boston. It hurt me to see America hurt. It's bad when madmen turn loose their mind and do what they do. If they're 19 or if they're 26, it's still mad to do what they did. Amen. I don't care how old they are, how young they are, it's the mind of mad people yes, that destroys the creation of God right. and That's destroys right. cities. I thought though when I looked at that, <coughs> what will America do <coughs> in a few days from now? Because the storm clouds are brewing. Yes, yes. And if we can't run with the footmen, and if we can't contend with the horsemen, right. what are we going to do in the spring of the Jordan? Because the Jordan is getting ready to swell right now. And this thing is going to go over its banks like the Jordan River. And destruction and panic. And the world is going to be plunged into it. But before that comes, oh my God, I hope I can get through. You better rearrange some of your dreams and your air castles you're building. You better rearrange what you're visualizing for the future. Yes. You better be sure that's not a dream. Amen. You better be sure it's got a foundation Amen. according to the scriptures. Oh, yes. You better be sure that it's built on the rock, yes. built on the word of God. Amen. Because it could be just your dream. Hallelujah. And that's all. Because this right here is not a dream. Amen. I said this is not a dream. Amen. The nation that sins against God uh -huh. will be judged by God. Yes. Amen. Sin is a reproach unto any people. Oh yes. Amen. In the book of Nahum, chapter one, over in the Old Testament, the burden of death, huh? the book of the vision of Nahum the Elkoshite. Now here's characteristics of God. Oh, yes. God is jealous. And the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth and is furious. Oh, yes. <clears throat> the Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. And he reserveth wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, <clears throat> and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind, 
and the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebuketh the sea, and maketh it dry, and drieth up all the rivers. <coughs> Bashan languished, and Carmel, and the flower of Lebanon languished. Thank you very much. The mountains, verse 5, quake at him, and the hills melt, and the earth is burnt at his presence. Yea, the world, and all that dwell therein. Now verse 6 is where we are. This is where America is. This is where the church age is. Who can stand before his indignation? That is, God is hurt. God resents his indignation. Because the nations, though he's slow to anger, he will not acquit the wicked. He's great in power, but he's slow in anger, to anger, be angry. But he has his way in the whirlwind, the storm. He rebukes the sea. Then the mountains quake at him. And this is spiritual mountains, yes. governments, and the hills melt, the lesser governments, the smaller nations, and the earth is burnt at his presence, his judgment. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation? And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. Now verse 7 is our safety net. Verse 7 is where the church will be preserved. Verse 7 is where that the church is going to not be contemporary but founded upon the rock. Because when all the indignation of the Lord turns loose in a period called Armageddon, and that's coming upon the nations and upon America. So all the dreams people have should be channeled according to this. Everything that you're planning to do should be channeled to this. Everything that Brother Marlowe preaches should be channeled to this. If the church is the church, and someone said, let the church be the church, I pray it will be, and it will be. Every decision we make as the church in a local city, the ecclesia, the prayer warriors, the people who love one another, love God, love the word, uh, should be channeled to this very day because this is the day that indignation of the Lord against all of the evil of man is going to be finally poured out. It's going to be poured out, the wrath of God. It's coming as a storm upon the nation, upon the world. And we like to evade that with our dreams. We're going to live, we're going to work, we're going to do, we're going to plan, we're going to build, we're going to go, and we're going to ignore God. I say plan and work and do, but don't ignore God. Why can't we just plan and work and do and not ignore God. Yes, sir. Right. Amen. And prepare ourselves Amen. as a church in mode of living, in thought stimulation, in mentality, in faithfulness of mind and character, according to the word of God, and let the church become a garner, a place where wheat is kept. And when God brings in, just like you brought in Brother Woodrow, Sister Jeanette back here, they won't come into a contemporary, All right. temporary group of people <coughs> that may move their tent tomorrow. No. Because tribulation, they can't handle it. Right. Because tribulation comes, and they can't deal with it. They can deal with fair weather, they can deal with good times, yeah. they can deal with prosperity, but they can't deal with tribulation. 
Um, but but we're not we, we don't do that. We're not, we don't have the tents up. We have our building up, our temple. And our temple is founded upon a rock. And we garnish our temple and we cleanse our temple and we keep our temple correct <coughs> according to the word of God. And we live by the law set before us. We're faithful to the law set before us. We do what the law tells us to do set before us. Because the day of the Lord has come. Though he's slow to anger, great in power, and the clouds are the dust of his feet, and though he's slow to anger, he will not all, at all, not at all, acquit the wicked. See, though he's slow to anger, he will not at all acquit the wicked. Nobody's going to get by with sin. Sin is a cancer that will eventually destroy anyone that lets it live in their house long enough without doing something about it. Uh, it, 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 it will eventually destroy the house. Oh, yes. So, so you said here, and the verse 7, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Would you say that with me? The Lord is good. I believe that. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. I've been upset with God at times. Have you? I have been. I'll be honest with you. I've been upset with God. So are you upset with God, Brother Marlow? That's why he's had to chastise me several times. <laughs> you think he just chastised me for his pleasure? Chastised me because God upset with him. You know, I've been upset uh, with his family sometimes. You, Brother Marlow, been upset? Well, certainly. I'm not an angel with these heavenly wings on the back of me. I'm not working with that house that's not corruptible, but this one is corruptible. But here's, here, here's what I know. The Lord is good. Yes. Oh my, I like this. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. A stronghold. Oh my God. A stronghold. Stronghold. You know what a stronghold is? It means he's got a strong hold on you. Yes. I threw that in for good measure. Yes, sir. We charge you for that. Hallelujah. You know what a stronghold is? Somebody said, the Lord is a stronghold. That means he's got a stronghold on you. Yes, Because he's got a stronghold when he doesn't have a stronghold on you. Right. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. But he's a stronghold. Not getting out. Where's the Lord? And he knoweth them that trust in him. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. And verse 8, I'll conclude right there. But with an overrunning flood, he will make another end of the place thereof, and the darkness, and, in, and, and darkness shall pursue the enemies. Go back to Revelation 14. Pick up a, a verse 3 there before I uh, go to uh, over and uh, again back in the Song of Moses. I'll go to the Song of the Lamb. Uh, first, uh, then we're going to Second Chronicles 34 for a few moments in uh, uh, Josiah, uh, King Josiah. And in Revelations 14, uh, give me the fourth verse now. We have that verse 3. Brother Marlowe, yes. can I ask you a question before you go further? You sure can. This is teaching. Could you elaborate a little bit? I, I know how you teach, <coughs> but could you elaborate on what you said about the faithful use the term that the Lord wants you to be faithful. Most people uh, term that as being just come through the doors every time that it is open. But can you go, can you elaborate on that a little yes. bit? And uh, yeah. my second question would be to you, I don't know where you're going here, I kind of got an idea, but can you tell us where we stand? You mentioned the word um, Armageddon and where do we stand in, in that where do we stand right now with all with that before you go? And if that's not where you're... That's no, that fits in, Brother Matthew. Thank you for that. I appreciate input. And questions are welcome from the congregation, from the elders here. Um, first of all, dealing with the word faithfulness. Faithfulness is not just showing up. That's right. Faithfulness is not just being at every numerical gathering right. of the ecclesia or the church. Uh -huh. 
That's not necessarily faithfulness. That's a characteristic uh -huh. of being faithful. That's a characteristic, but it's not the whole uh, understanding of the word faithful or faithfulness. Um, faithful means that you cannot and you will not detour from taking care of your responsibility right. in your salvation experience. Uh -huh. All of the Word of God that should apply to you, and that's all of it, you will be faithful or consistent in practicing the Word of God in your life. Uh, no one can be numerically present at every gathering of the church. There's too many activities, there's too many gatherings. Uh, no one can be just unfaithful because they're not in a given service at a given time. If that would be carnal judgment, that would be wrong judgment to say, well, he isn't faithful because he wasn't here for X amount of gatherings, or that would be so small. We couldn't measure that as truth in the scripture. That's a characteristic of faithfulness that at some point in time, you, according to your ability, according to your circumstances, according to your finance, according to your strength, according to the way God lets you move about, your mobility, uh, your opportunity, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. So much the more as you see the day approaching, Hebrews 10, 36, see forsake not. But because you were not in a numbered amount of services, it would be carnal of me to judge you as being unfaithful. But your character of faithfulness and being faithful would be if I don't hear of you renouncing or forsaking the truth a year after or two years after or three years after or six days after or six years after. All right. But whenever I met you, whenever I saw you, You've tried to be, yes, a characteristic of faithfulness. You've not forsaken the assembly of yourself together, as you were able to do, uh -huh. and you could. Uh, but for me to judge you calmly and say, she wasn't here, he wasn't here, therefore, they're not faithful. That would be a carnal judgment on my part or your part. But the character of your faithfulness would rest in your faith. And your faith is what Jude speaks of in the book of Jude when he said, uh, I wrote to you to consider with all diligence, earnestly contend for the faith. Amen. The faith Amen. that was once delivered to the saints. Now, if you have the faith, that's the understanding of the word of God as it's taught by an anointed ministry truth and not error, uh, true teaching, not false doctrine, and you practice that in every aspect of your life as a man or woman on this earth. You practice all the knowledge that is imparted to you as a member of the body of Christ. Wherever you go, you can be identified as a member of the body of Christ. Whether you work in a school, a bank, whether you work in the fields, whether you work plumbing, whether you work wallpapering, or or janitorial work, or if you're just retired, or if you're just a minister with a calling, a gift of God in you, and you're part of the ecclesia in that local assembly because all ministers are at some place or another, uh, your faithfulness is your total understanding, conception, belief, and practice of the truth as it is in Christ that's been given you by teaching, by revelation, and you practice that, you'll go through trials, you'll go through tests. I can't judge you if you go through a trial and say, he isn't faithful. If you go through a test, he isn't faithful. That's carnal of me to do that. See, I'm not to judge. The scripture said, judge not that you be not judged. For with the same judgment you judge, shall be judged. Same measure, shall be measured again. Uh, Matthew 6. See, for being a judge, you would say, well, they're not faithful. No, I'm going to judge you on your total character content. All right. Your total faith. Uh -huh. See, have, have you, have you, do you have the faith? Do you understand the faith? Yeah. Does the faith have you? So that the faith uh, keeps you and you will not forsake the faith.